And in today's 9 o'clock hour, Dr. Mitchell Hackerman, and he brings with him uh, a colleague, a respected cardiologist by the name of Dr. Sukeda Nadavati. And Dr. Nadavati will discuss how the medical system is run by sharing his many experiences. Uh, and, of course, as Dr. Hackerman's guest within the framework of our twice-monthly discussion with Pro-PT and Rehab Physical Therapy that would weigh in heavily. Dr. Hackerman with his special guest, Dr. Natavati. Next, it's early in the morning. We'll be back. WPG Atlantic City and WPG1450.com. Welcome back. It's early in the morning. It's my pleasure to welcome back to our palatial studios Dr. Mitchell Hackerman. Dr. Hackerman owns Pro-PT and Rehab Physical Therapy. He has offices in North Cape May in Cape May County. The Cape May County number for your ready reference, and that office is at 650 Town Bank Road, Suite 203 in North Cape May, 609-884-9800. Dr. Hackerman, Happy New Year to you. And Happy New Year to you. It's a pleasure being back. It's a pleasure to have you back. Let's um, let's talk about a few things, and I know that you'll have a guest a little bit later in the hour, Dr. Natabadi, and looking forward to welcoming him to your program. Sure. Uh, one of the things that I mentioned in several of the uh, promos that I did today announcing that you would be here today in the 9 o'clock hour is the fact that I believe you're educating people into understanding that physical therapy is not assigned to you, that you have to go here. If you need physical therapy, that you have choice. You can. It's like school choice. It's like any type of choice. You go, you know, the public school might not be the best option for a family after they look at all their options. They might decide to go to wherever, and they have choice. You have choice in your world as well. Well, we tend to be a creature of habit, basically. And when you get used to a certain system, you're just used to that system. So even despite the fact that um, we have direct access now where we can see patients directly off the street, people are still used to the system of going to the physician first. But another reason why they go to the physician first is because uh, a lot of insurance policies uh, will require that. And there are some that don't, but they're far and few between. And the key is to try to get to me as soon as possible. I mean. I don't pretend to do what primary care physicians do. They're a very valuable source for many reasons, many things. As a physical therapist, if you have neck pain, if you have back pain, if you have arm pain, shoulder, whatever it is, there's really no reason why you can't come to me directly. In fact, you can do that. I can consult with you, and then you can, if you need to get a prescription because of your insurance policy, you can certainly go to your physician at that time and uh, try to acquire one. And how lucky you will be and, and how expeditious that will be will depend on your relationship and the knowledge your doctor has of your condition. Uh, there are certainly situations where a primary care physician already has worked with you and know that you have an issue, and they'll go ahead and fax the uh, paperwork right over to me so we can get started. Um, there are some occasions, uh, unfortunately, where the physician may say, oh, well, he has to see you first. And what's really strange is a lot of times you have to go through the secretaries or through to get to the physician. They, they're like acting as uh, blocking agents, you know. So, <laughs> so, Football blocker. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. So That's a talent. That, That's that, a talent. I know. But, you know, <laughs> getting around that can be tough. But, uh, you know, they're just following their, their parent policy. But uh, the thing is, if you have to be emphatic about your condition, number one, because if you have a bad condition, you have to say, look, if, if he insists on seeing me, I've got to be seen right away because I've got a real problem here and I can't wait. Otherwise, you could be put on the back burner for a week or two. And some people don't really speak up uh, for themselves uh, very avidly uh, at times, and they do themselves an injustice and they don't get seen because they don't fight for themselves. It's true. They sufficiently. stay too passive. Yeah, you have to fight for yourself and, and you know, what you want or what you need. I always say that yeah. as a layperson that the patient, they need to be their best advocate. Exactly. And, and you're not a pain in anybody's neck. It's your right. You have a right to, uh, you know, to expect, you know, the, um, the type of care that, that you deserve. Dr. Hackerman, and for those just tuning in, it's Dr. Mitchell Hackerman. He'll be with us this hour. His business is Pro-PT and Rehab, Cape May County, North Cape May, uh, for your physical therapy. Something you do that I haven't taken the most voluminous survey uh, in the known universe, but, but I've looked around, and I, I think it's unique, and I'd like you to talk about it. Say you go to physical therapy, and I remember one time many, many years ago I had to go to physical therapy, and sometimes you would feel really good because you had either some kind of manipulation or you had some kind of stimulation or something that just really worked, but then a little while later you felt really stiff and you didn't feel good again. 
if somebody has a result and leaves you, and later that day, see, in the old world, it would be, well, I'll see you next time. I don't know when the next appointment is. It might be next week. If you're going every two weeks, it might be in two weeks. If you're going several times a week, it could still be days. You will have somebody, if their time permits, be able to come right back and see you again, don't you? Oh, absolutely. That's unusual, isn't it? Isn't yeah, that well, rare? Oh, of course it's rare because they're, they're running in business, basically. Like, you were here for today. See you next time. Yeah. See, I, look, I like to earn a living like the next guy does, but I like to earn it the right way. I have a conscience, and I actually care about my patients. That's really the bottom line. So if I have somebody that, ha that say, they come in for a neck problem and I'm able to help them with their neck problem, but they leave and, and it comes back later. I let them come back, and I just go ahead and work with them again. But one of the things that is the toughest thing, I think, in my, uh, career, in my industry is you can't control what people do once they leave you. And I can't, you know, once you, you deal with them, you give them education, you talk about the importance of posture, body mechanics, uh, if they're feeling better, a lot of times they become overconfident or they forget about their body mechanics or their posture. They do something that's deleterious to their condition. Or even at times they may have a good night's sleep but wake up in the morning and have some other issues. So, you know, sometimes you talk yourself blue in the face trying to give somebody instructions. And if they don't follow it to the letter and they don't feel good the next day, uh, they think that something might, might not have worked or they can't put two and two together. So I try to communicate from the beginning. Pain is your guide. Pain is not there to scare you. If I help you get rid of this pain, you have to make sure that you pay attention to your posture, your body mechanics. And if you have pain, think about what you're doing at the time that that pain comes back and how long you're doing it for because you need to take that information to give you information and, and teach you a lesson, basically, as to how gravitational forces are influencing your symptoms, how positions or movements are influencing your symptoms, because it, it tells you something. There might be a pattern there. It might be something consistent. So you have to pay attention to that. Let me also ask you, it's a sort of a hybrid of the last yeah. question, but it's, it's, it, it is a distinct separate question. You have somebody, everybody's time is very valuable. People are working like crazy. Some are working more than one job in a, in a, you know, in a rough economy that we've had during the Great Recession. And they might have a certain amount of time. You might really think they need more time, but they might only have a certain amount of time here. But then they might have some more time at a later point. You can work a model for someone that works within their Exactly, yeah. You've gotten to know me after being yeah. here for enough times. <laughs> I pay attention. Yeah, you sure do. Uh, yeah, basically that's the situation. I mean, if you have a limited time, like some people come out during their lunch break, and uh, I'll let them participate in the time that they have, and uh, if they have more to do, I just let them come back later on in the evening and finish out their program. I just can't imagine, like if you think about it, a lot of places give you only 45, 60 minutes. A lot of times they throw in a hot pad and a cold pad and that in that time period. If you talk about that time, you're talking about another 10 to 20, 20 minutes eaten up. And how much does that leave you for manual therapy if you need it, various exercises if you need it? I just feel like the time goes by so quick I didn't do, do much of anything in, in a lot of cases. Now certainly there are cases that don't need quite as much or you need to ease into things. But there's also, in a lot of cases, you're trying to progress somebody, there's more things they can do. And I'm not rushing them through a whole bunch of things, one thing after the other. What I'm letting them do, if they need to, is just relax for a bit afterwards so their tissues have time to recuperate in between activities. And uh, I keep it a casual social atmosphere. I'm not running timers on uh, exercises. I'm not running timers on different things. I'm not shuffling people through the system. It's just a much more laid-back environment. If you do have to get out sooner, I'll, I'll respect your time constraints. And, you know, we'll do our best to either let you come back later or, you know, work out something else. I mean, somebody can say to you, I have to be out of here within an hour today. Sure. And you'll be respectful of that. Ex and exactly. Mindful of it. Exactly. And it might be that, okay, we'll do what we can. If we need more, we'll check with you when your availability is and you exactly. work with someone like that. Exactly. It sounds obvious, but, yeah. but I don't want to leave any assumptions out there. What is it about your approach that you feel is better than the other approaches? Well, for example, since I avail people the extra time, it lets me watch them perform in the gym and do, do, do various activities. It allows me to basically see what else they need as I'm observing them. And it allows me to, to progress them. Um, it allows me to analyze them right there in real time. 
and then I can go ahead and, and change up what I do with them. And we provide many treatment methodologies. I don't just like say, okay, this, you know, if something doesn't work, I may try something from what we call the McKenzie approach. If that doesn't work, I may try something from the Mulligan approach. If that doesn't work, I may try something from uh, Sarah Meeks. I mean, there's a whole lot of things to choose from. And you work together as a team with the patient. And, um, and basically, uh, I, I, they've got my full attention for the entire time. We're going to step aside for just a couple of minutes. When uh, Dr. Hackerman returns, he will introduce his distinguished guest who is in studio with us. It's Dr. Mitchell Hackerman. His great practice is pro-PT and rehab to help you with your physical therapy needs. North Cape May, and he will give you all the details when we come back in terms of addresses, phone numbers, and how you can reach Dr. Hackerman, including his great interactive website. We um, have a great opportunity to welcome to the program your distinguished guest. How about I let you do the honors of introducing your distinguished guest? Yes. I've heard of him for a long time. <laughs> yes, this is Dr. Sukhita Nanavati. And uh, I actually met Dr. Nanavati because he was uh, recommended to me for his own uh, back condition. Uh, apparently his patients had given him feedback uh, about me and I believe your employee, right? Right. So I'll let him take it over <laughs> and describe Dr. what Ryan, happened. Great to see you. Same here. Hmm. The reason I come down today yeah. for Dr. Ackerman is uh, I had a problem one time. Uh, yeah. I'm a good ping pong player uh, and we are playing and trying to take the ball down I developed little back pain, so I said, let me find out sometimes uh, you have some strange, uh, very small incidents and it can be very serious one. And I see a lot of patients in heart which are very old patients and they have got back pain and then next thing we know it's a, like a metastasis from the pancreas or kidney. So I said, oh, let's. so I get MRI and everything and then I went to him. He gave me one treatment. I'm much better again. <laughs> so that's how I came to know him and I went down to his office. I was very impressed because in my office we have a lot of equipment to find a rare diagnosis. So when I saw his office, I mean, I was really impressed. So I sent a couple of patients and then last week he called me and said whether you come down to this show because his problem and my problem are same. I mean, that how the big uh, uh, organization come down and people just uh, follow the advice of the doctors rather than do any investigation for the uh, institution or even a big uh, congl conglomerate and people are paying a lot of money and everybody knows with the cliff talks here in the Washington that government doesn't have money <laughs> Whatever we are living right now is on borrowed money. And one of the most important aspect of the spending is the Medicare. And if you see the price structure, which most of the people don't care, I mean, because government is paying. If you are paying from your pocket, you will look around, shop around. And that is what Ackerman told me that, hey, listen, I charge this much less money for my service, same service in big institution or Philadelphia or somewhere else you go, you have to pay almost double or triple money. We see the same thing in the stress test. We do nuclear stress test in office, which uh, about seven, eight hundred dollars, but in hospital you go, it can be two thousand, three thousand. Patient is hooked for twenty percent co-payment or deductible. So although it is labeled as a free, it is not a free money. <laughs> It's not a free market economy. <laughs> and it's not a, it's a totally distorted uh, free market. Yeah. Dr. Nadabadi, when we started the dialogue with Dr. Hackerman, I, d I do believe that the vast majority of people believed that if physical therapy is going to be part of your treatment plan, that you basically get assigned to physical therapy. They pretty much tell you where to go and you go because in your mind, you just assume this is how it has to be and unless you knew that you have choice to pick the physical therapist of your choice that you could say hey listen I agree with you doctor I need physical therapy but I would like to go here if you don't know that that's an option you just go with the program. Well it also uh, happens with his field too and it also happens with um, 
It happened with other people I know. I spoke to uh, this dentist who uh, was arranging to get lab tests done at his normal place, and they said, no, no, you have to go over here. And they directed him to their own thing. They're trying to get you to go to this one-stop shop for everything. And, you know, I, I just tell people, don't fall into the convenience trap. Take your time. You know, the, um, a lot of people would be seeing Dr. Nanavati if they knew about Dr. Nanavati uh, and did their own research and uh, figure out where you're going to get the most attention. And plus, it's a way of cutting health care costs, basically. And people That's don't it. realize that. You want to save health care costs? Uh, we don't get reimbursed as much. So go to a private physical therapist-owned facility, you're, and you've got somebody who has a personal interest in their own business. As I said, I could have people there for a few hours, possibly. And plus, so why get, have the government reimburse more, or the insurance companies, or yourself for that matter, and be in and out within a set time frame. I don't have a set time frame. I have to evaluate you. I have to see where you're at, what you're doing. And uh, based on that, it tells me what I need to sp how much time I need to spend and wh where to cut it off. See, what's yeah. very interesting, and, and I would love the two of you to, um, to talk about this a little bit, Here's uh, Dr. Navadi, and I will never forget that you love ping pong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you are a very excellent ping pong player. I'm a very average ping pong player. When I see the pace of that game, and people don't realize the velocity that's oh. involved. So when you really know how to play, there is a tremendous amount of torque and, and movement that you're doing, as opposed to if you're just, you know, hitting it like a dink or something but you're hitting it at a, at, a, at a higher level so here you are thinking all right i'm going to check everything pancreas i'll check ibs i'll check uh, appendix i'll check everything meanwhile a trip through dr hackerman's physical therapy and only one treatment and he put me in one of the machine which uh, stretches the spine and i know that uh, some other places they charge almost 10 times he's charging and he explained to me that what it does, it basically it extends your spine. So the yes. only problem is because of the flexion rather than extension. And he taught me how to sit down, how to bend forward to pick up the balls, and whenever you go down, use a stool to sit down rather than bend forward. You want to hear something funny? With physicians as my patients, most of the time I have to I have to get it done in one shot because a lot of physicians, <laughs> for some reason, don't like to keep coming back sure. to to rehash things or to go over things again. They've got a busy schedule, and so you have to be lucky enough to get it done in and one shot. And they're also used to telling people yeah. their plan of you know uh, of of course a regimen as opposed to being the patient. Yeah, I was lucky to get like um, my. Uh, uh, Dr. David Rayfield was supposed to come to me for some time, and he kept putting off because I was over an hour away. He's been in here before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he, um, so he finally, you know, said, "Okay, I'm going to come out and see him because through word of mouth." And I, I was fortunate because in the one session, I could figure out what was going on. It's a very atypical issue with him, and it worked out beautifully for him. So, and that's been the case I've noticed with a lot of physicians I work with. They just don't have a lot of time uh, to spend. What's the best way to, I think you're doing it, but, but, but to continue the, yeah. the, the thought, to explain to folks that they have a lot more say in the matter than they might have thought? The most uh, common uh, problem with the patient is they think that they have to follow doctors to the, I mean, wherever he send you, you go, wherever he tell you to do certain things. We have people come to me after 25 years. I remember one patient who was passing out for 25 years, and his uh, son and me went to see the game, and we were talking about the politics and uh, hospital politics, and so we said that... Uh, this is a man uh, to my heart. <laughs> I can tell you that. I like these conversations, guys. So, he was falling down, so he told his doctor that, what should I do? I mean, he did send a couple of doctors, and he cannot figure it out. So finally he came, and he, I saw him and uh, did uh, so that he doesn't pass out. We have a machine called NSAR, which uh, determines the autonomic nervous system. It's a subject by itself. And right now Hillary Clinton passed out, and everybody, yes. sa everybody says he passed out because of dehydration. I don't believe that. I think that she has an autonomic dysfunction, and when she passed out, she hit the head. I had the concussion. And generally, in dehydration, you don't pass out flat like this, and you don't hit your head that hard. 
So they should look into more detail. Into you think it would be more of a slower, like right? Soft you you can hold on. I mean, yeah, soft landing. So you you. I mean, you can. I mean, theoretically. Yeah. But again, if you have a, what we call autonomic dysfunction, you go like a like a, you go in a one within seconds. I mean, because all the blood goes to your leg and nothing goes to your brain, and brain doesn't have a time to. Uh, it's good. To adjust and you pass out. She's very fortunate, it seems. She's fortunate, I mean, but whatever she has, I don't think we are getting the right information. Did somebody tell her to wear a helmet, you said? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not her. I mean, that See, patient, he yeah. was passing out, the <laughs> yeah. doctor told him to wear the helmet so that he doesn't... Because <laughs> it could happen at any time. Right. And so you, you raise a point, some people might split hairs and say, well, how does he know? Because if something should be a softer landing, if you will, fall, but it's so... Hillary Clinton's was so abrupt that she had a head injury right. because of it. That means that she fell like a ton of bricks. Right. Like she went out right. in yeah. a snap as we, opposed to a soft. We call it a vasovagal syncope because I'm a cardiologist. I mean, many people come to me because they pass out. It's called syncope also. Right. And so many cool. people have no idea that uh, vast majority of these symptoms, people don't know why people pass out. Yeah. I have a editor of the big newspaper in our area my patient and he get all the MRI and many times we like 40 50 percent of the time people don't have an idea why people pass out till this new machine came out NSAR and which is old machine but nobody knows about it and we have a extensive experience for last six years especially syncope atrial fibrillation hypertension so it is quite and chronic fatigue syndrome you're listening mm -hmm. to Dr. Hackerman and Dr. Right. Navadi Dr. Hackerman um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that one of the um, things in which a cardiologist can work with me is there's a lot of people who have osteoporosis. I think by the time you're over the age of 50, about 55% of the population has some form of osteoporosis, and it can be quite debilitating, and, and you can get some quite a bit of uh, kyphosis, hyperkyphosis, which can basically start compressing the organs over time if it's a bad enough deformity that could affect your breathing that could affect your um, your heartbeat so um, with someone like Dr. Nanavati who gets somebody who has an extreme deformity who's having these issues those are some people even though they're very structurally uh, seem to be fixed there is some evidence that shows you can uh, get, gain some improvement uh, with their structure to try to take some pressure off those internal organs and I do have like an osteoporosis program where I basically uh, you know evaluate the person and, and understand something with something like that osteoporosis um, most people don't know that they have had fractures uh, only maybe 30 percent or so are symptomatic when the rest of them are not symptomatic and when you do have an osteoporotic fracture your chances of having another one increase by five fold so there's a lot of people with a significant osteoporosis and they're doing these exercise routines that could actually be deleterious to them for example it's um you know osteoporosis really gets the front of the spinal column and if you are doing knees to chest or bending over a lot that can be a problem you might have some issues in there you don't know about and that could create a problem so you have to I ha you have to be really careful uh, under those circumstances and I don't think enough people are being checked for those types of things excellent excellent point so. let me throw a question out to you that ca came from one of your listeners who said they couldn't call in today but would I ask the question for them they've been dealing with something for about a year now and they don't have any pain except if they lift if they lift they have like a burning sensation in their lower right side mm -hmm. they've been checked it's not like a hernia or anything like that if they don't lift anything they can handle moderate weight they can't handle something that's heavy that puts a strain where actually if people don't realize it if you go and you lift something up maybe a, a bucket and you have that amount of weight 40 pounds or whatever it might be or some big bottle of water people don't realize yeah. it. you have a lot of injuries with people lifting those big bottles of water and putting them on top of the thing and they feel this burning sensation mm -hmm. they want to know if there's anything you can do that can help there well it's like anything you're giving me some good starting information that's subjective information I actually have to sit down and question that person significantly for example um, through the interview process you get you gain information you need to hear uh, it could be there could be repeated patterns or repeated movements they do that reproduce the symptoms you have to get a handle on that subjectively okay then you have to move the joints you have to have them move it actively 
that see when you uh, incorporate a muscular tenderness unit or contractile tissue, whether that creates, uh, reproduces the symptoms, and then you have to move the part yourself to see if, if you're moving it yourself, the contractile elements are out of the picture. I'm just moving the joint and seeing how that affects it. I have to go through that whole process to see what, what is most likely causing it. And now this brings me back to the point I made before, if I could see patients right away, and I hope soon uh, they'll get rid of those um, policies where they have to get a prescription first, because if I, if I can see somebody right away, I can determine these things. And if we find uh, over a few visits that this is a non-mechanical issue, non-musculoskeletal issue, then I can go ahead and refer that person out for uh, to another, uh, to a physician or to, or for some diagnostic studies or whatever uh, they might need at that time. We determine that. So I get concerned when people go through the route of getting the prescription, then they might be bounced over to um, right away to the orthopedic consult, then they get the MRI, then they get all these different things, and by the time they get to me, they will have might have worsened or, or a bulging disc may have completely torn and created a herniated disc, and that's happened in the past. I can't tell you a number of times. Great, but great. if I can get somebody, I've had people go through the whole process, MRIs, they come in with all this stuff, and one session we take away their pain. Now, what was the point in spending all that money and all that time and all that stuff when I could have dealt with them right away? If they had come in to me right away and I couldn't get anywhere with them, um, then we, from that point onward, then we know what we need to do. Then we, then we refer out for these things, and you save a lot of health care dollars. You can rule in and rule out. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about trying to save money in this health care environment. Yeah. Well, okay, easy way. Give us, we have direct access. We can legally do this, so honor it. The insurance companies and everybody should allow us to see patients uh, without a referral, without a prescription. If we find that it's non-musculoskeletal or something else is going on, we refer them back. And that will free up some of these offices and let more people be seen for other issues that the physicians need to spend their time with. We're going to take a brief time out. You're listening to Dr. Mitchell Hackerman. His guest today is Dr. Nadavati, a noted cardiologist. Great dialogue between the yes. two doctors. We're going to take a brief time out, come back in just two minutes. Uh, Dr. Hackerman has offices in North Cape May at 650 Town Bank Road, Suite 203. The phone number to make an appointment is 609 884 9800. 609 884 9800 on the World Wide Web at ProPTRehab.com. We'll be right back. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Glenn Beck is next at 10, followed by me at 3. Now back to Harry Hurley right here on WPG Talk Radio 1450. Thank you, Sean. With uh, Dr. Hackerman and Dr. Natavati, it is early in the morning with um, the, the program that we do twice a month with Pro-PT and Rehab. That is Dr. Hackerman's physical therapy companies with offices in North Cape May and right here in Atlanta County in Mays Landing, right down the uh, Black Horse Pike at ha Festival at Hamilton Mall. Guys, I think one of the key points for listeners to process and fully grasp, understand, is the fact that when they're, you know, and sometimes I know what happens. I always tell people when you're going, I'm a layperson, but I do a lot of interviews with doctors and hospitals, and I always tell people, write down the questions you want to ask your doctor, because what's going to happen is you'll go there, you will have waited, it's a stressful thing, you might not know exactly what news you're going to get, and all of a sudden you blank out, and then you leave and you're in your car and you think, oh, I wanted to ask this, I wanted to ask that. You write down your questions. Another thing that I think is important from the way that you're approaching things with your practices is that people are the boss. We're the boss, we have a say in this, we have a right to go where we want to go, because even if it's not directly stated in such a definitive, restrictive way, I think most people get the opinion that if they go here, and then they say, and here's where you're going to go for your physical therapy, you just accept that, that that's not within your choice anymore, <laughs> that that has been assigned for you. I think this is an important point that you two experts should play a little ping pong with <laughs> now that you're right. healed the the most important thing is that uh, people are told where to go and only particular doctor they will give particular facility gives that is uh, we uh, me and uh, Mr. Dr. Eckerman met in the uh, diners in Cape May Courthouse and said people wants to come for months and they cannot come because the doctor will say go this go there so people don't understand that uh, 
there is an alliance between certain doctors, there is a friendship. Not that every doctor is uh, corrupt or uh, totally bad, but sometimes friendship comes in the way. and uh, Or affiliation. The, affiliation, because they don't have a say. I mean, certain doctors, I mean, when they sell the practice to the hospital, hospital will say that you have to send patient to this group of radiologists, uh, this physical therapy, because everybody wants to uh, combine everything in one place so that they can make maximum money out of the patient. And it's not in the patient's interest to follow that. The, the reason in America that we have a capitalistic system is that you try to get the maximum with a minimum amount of money. Here we are doing is exactly opposite. It's an anti-capitalistic thing that you go to a doctor, you pay the full money, and then you don't say anything. And as you mentioned that you write down. In our office, we give the patient that if you forget, you call one of the nurses and nurse will contact me. That sometimes people come and they forget. I mean, generally e forget. I mean, Easy to forget. You're and, nervous. And also they feel that we cannot ask this question to doctor. And that is so bothering. I mean, patient has a chest pain. I, I, and they say, I don't want to go to the hospital. Please go to the hospital because if you are dead, nothing, yeah. nobody can do. And although it is uh, cumbersome sometimes, it's very expensive if you don't have the insurance, it's better to go to the doctor's office than the hospital because almost 10 times more charges you uh, have to pay. And that is something called uh, uh, facility fees. That's why all this surgical center came out because what happened is that if you go to the hospital, same procedure, you pay almost double or triple the money. We have the same problem with the stress test, nuclear stress test, most commonly prescribed test, I mean. Save thousands of people's life, I mean. Yeah. I had my first colonoscopy. I made a goal that before I would turn 50, I'm 52 now, so when I was 49, I had my first colonoscopy with Dr. Spar, and it was in a surgical center. I didn't mm -hmm. go into the hospital. Right. They, I was very confident in him. I was very confident in the facilities. They had everything there, and uh, that was the way that we went about it. Well, they also have... Um a main line from the hospital too because once you see a physician that's affiliated with them uh, they have your name sure. uh, and what happens is they call your house and they say I'm calling to schedule your physical therapy appointment or I'm calling to set up your stress test I mean it's a direct line and it's like oh you know it just sounds like exactly the way the it, protocol is exactly, exactly how it's supposed to be it's yeah. so I'm trying to get the word out and it's, it's, it's fighting uphill because you know how many people really take the time or to, to find this information out or get a chance to hear it. And you know when I mean, people hear it the first time, they go, hey, I didn't know that. I thought this was kind of all locked up and set, you know, for me, and yeah. I didn't realize that. Well, that could, yeah, you don't want to get caught into the convenience trap. It's like, you know, you walk into a place, okay, you're seen by the physician. Now they have a rehab center right next door, and over here they might have a lab, or they might have, you know, whatever, the whole, everything, the one-stop shop thing. But in the end, it costs everybody a lot more because they, there's, uh, they get reimbursed a lot more. When you can be getting either the same or better, if you just take a little time or drive a couple extra miles or go somewhere else, you won't be treated and it won't, you won't have that sort of conveyor belt mentality. It's not saying these people are bad or they're bad at what they do. It's just that the structure people have to work in is not optimal in those situations. Well, the, a, even so. at, its, at its fundamental level, having choice is mm -hmm. a good thing. That is American it, way. <laughs> yes, it gives you alternatives. You can right. decide if this school is good enough or if you want to go to that school. Or if you know public school isn't good enough, you want to go to a private school or a religious school. If you want to go to pro-PT rehab uh, and not to this one just because somebody told you, and maybe with educating people, the next time somebody says, we have your... Um, your physical therapy all set up, you'll be getting a call. Maybe you say, well, wait a minute, I, I want to have a say in that. Sure. You know, you don't have to. You can short circuit that because, you know, what I always believe an informed consumer, to me, that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the status quo or the institution, an informed consumer is almost the enemy because if you know too much, then you realize you have, you know, your rights and your, your, your choice there, and then they have to have that conversation with you. You're right. You have the opportunity. If you want to go to Dr. Mitch, you can do that. Uh, we were just telling you this is, you know, an, an opportunity that's available, but you can be a savvy, educated, your best advocate which is what I think a patient should be. Well, the p part of the problem is, is like in my field, is that people 
here, oh, I need physical therapy, and they're, they just, it's a very arbitrary term to them, very vague. So to them, they choose what's closest to them. They've never really sat and thought to themselves, does it really matter where I go? Okay, is there a different training? Is there uh, different methodologies available? And they often don't even think about those things. So uh, that's part of the change of mindset people have to have. If you, you take, take, your, take a couple minutes, yeah. Dr. Mitch, and tell listeners why it's important that they not just accept the cookie cutter mold or, hey, this one's right down the street, so I'm just going to do that because it's convenient. Why is it worth it? Uh, and you might be right down the street from someone, so you could be geographically very convenient. But why is it worth it to go to the right place as opposed to the right location? It's important because you want to make sure that the person who's working with you actually cares about your condition. And when you're not progressing, they also care. Uh, one of the toughest things in my field is when I have a tough patient that I can't help. And uh, I actually feel that <laughs> myself. And um, and But I also know that the same feelings that make me feel negative about not being able to help this person as much as I would like to is exactly what makes me push a little push harder to help them. I can't be in a setting, and I only got into this, got my own facilities because I couldn't continue in my career in a setting where I had a limited uh, time period to work with somebody and just uh, and just didn't have that freedom of movement. Now, the my physical therapists who work with me, they have freedom of movement. I let them keep people as long as they need to to figure out what how to best treat them. But they're not in a in a rush atmosphere. And I will say it, it's getting harder and harder because they keep coming up with new rules and regulations. Medicare just came up with some new rules we have to learn all about, something called PQRS, and then there's a, another severity scale and all these different things. They have to hire more regulators, and we have to pay more taxpayers to this, and it's really complicating the system. And I almost feel like they're doing it to prevent me from being able to see as many patients because they think that maybe that will cut down on health care costs when, in fact, they're just spending more money to hire regulators and stuff. I just want to do my, the proper job for the patient. And that's the, that's the bottom line. So it truly does matter where you go for your physical therapy. It matters where you go for your, to see a cardiologist. Are these people going to take a personal interest in you? And uh, or are you going to just be sort of rushed through the system? I just got a, I just got a message from a listener, but I'm going to defer that because you were going to speak, Dr. Natabadi. Yes. Ahead. One of the things about uh, physical therapy and cardiology is that in cardiology, sometimes you don't have a second chance. Yeah, well, that's true. You've got chest pain. You say, oh, it's a musculoskeletal pain. I will go to see the doctor tomorrow. Yeah. And if you go to certain doctors, I'm working for 35 years now. Right. So what I saw over the years is uh, people used to send to the doctors, like I sent patient to Philadelphia, but I will send it to the best doctors. Now it is not the best doctor whom you know rather than, so the particular doctor will send it to particular doctor, not because... Mm -hmm they want to or they don't even find out who is the best doctor in that area and in cardiology sometimes only one chance you get it's a great we, point we have seen so many patients that they come to my office one day next day they are on the atlantic city uh, bypass surgery or angioplasty we have a fortunately we have got one of the best uh, medical center atlantic medical center their surgeon both uh, Dr. Uh, yeah. Axel Road and Drell, both are outstanding surgeons. So when I send my patient there, mm -hmm. I'm very confident. People used to send it to Philadelphia. Automatically. I send all my patients to Philadelphia when I started because there was nothing here. Yeah. And we send Deborah quite a bit patient. But uh, Deborah is quite far off. I mean, people have to travel quite a bit of distance. So now people, mm -hmm. I've got a great relationship with uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Axel Road, Dr. Drell, and uh, many of my cardiac care is done by my uh, partner, Dr. Spillman, and also uh, Dr. Levitt, which is from New York University. So basically, I'm getting NYU doctor in Atlantic City. Yeah, so because of affiliations. Because of the affiliations. Dr. Mitch. No, I, I was going to follow up uh, on something. A listener wrote in. It's a Mission Impossible question because they want to know how off, you know, how many times do you need to see Dr. Mitch for results? And that, I, I mean, I even know you can't answer that because you have to see the person. But it's interesting to note that sometimes I guess you just don't know. Uh, Dr. Natavati has pain. One visit, he's good to go. 
-hmm. you might have someone that it could take a number of visits yeah. for the progress to be reached. Well, the toughest cases are you know, inflammatory cases where you have a lot of chemical pain, and almost anything you do to some of these patients will inflame it. And the toughest thing is sometimes they think you made them worse when you know you didn't. You ha you're basically getting diagnostic information by the reaction, the reaction to what you do. But they feel and like, oh man, I feel worse than. Well, I, well, I, I always explain from the beginning. I need, like, for example, if you have constant pain, constant pain can come from constant tissue deformation or it could come from uh, inflammatory or chemical process or a combination of both. Uh, there are situations where we can, under those circumstances, a combination, you reduce the, the pressure on tissue, say, for example, a disc bulge, theoretically speaking, then the pain may reduce, but they still have uh, pain that, that's still there because everything's very irritated. Uh, so there's different things that, that uh, but the patient needs to work with you. And one of the toughest things is that sometimes you can talk yourself blue in the face and the and person may not understand that, and they, they discontinue to their own detriment, unfortunately. Final break. We're going to come right back. Yeah. When we come back, anything that you two doctors want to talk about the time is yeah. of course yours Dr. Hackerman but I also want to ask you to respond to something maybe in the form of I'll say it as a lay person and you you'll do better with it but like a repetitive type thing I mentioned to you until about seven months ago for over 20 years I sat down I would find myself pronated because you want to speak into a directional and microphone yeah, and so my neck four hours a day really protruded uh, now that I stand yeah. I'm able to stay much more erect. I do move and sh shake out my limbs and keep you know, limber so that I don't get stiff. And I have found that some of the neck pain that I used to get from time to time, it only happens maybe once every year or two, but I would all of a sudden have such terrible neck pain because I made a change yeah. from a repetitive thing that I was doing for so long. I've had relief. So I want you to talk about what people can do in that respect. And of course, I think it involves sitting with you, having that consult, and we can learn more about ourselves than we really ever knew by paying attention to what is bringing about. Like all of a sudden, my neck hurts, but I don't care to find out, well, why does my neck hurt? Do I do something, you know? The biggest problem is once you resolve an issue, then people forget about it and they go back to their old habits. There so you that's go. the toughest thing you yeah. have to face. But I'm still right standing way. and I'm going to continue to do that. Yeah. And then we'll see yeah. if all of a sudden and you can You can lose weight also. See? <laughs> I, I, Very simple yeah. thing. I agree. Yeah. One of the, I think, secretary of Dr. Levitt, I mean, she was uh, overweight and then she starts standing while writing the notes. She lost 15, 20 pounds. That's good enough. So it is very yeah. important that <laughs> actually I should do that because I'm I sit most of the time. And <laughs> Now you typically, do you sit in a stool or I, do you sit on a chair that has a back? I sit on the chair now. Okay. But all these years I was in on the stool because it's very convenient to no turn support, around. Of course. But yeah. now I got the very fancy chair. So. See? <laughs> all right. We're going to come right very back. comfortable. <laughs> I love this conversation. Dr. Hackerman, his office is in North Cape May in Cape May County. We'll be back in two minutes. It's early in the morning. This portion of our program brought to us in part by my official country club, the Mays Landing Golf and Country Club. It's my pleasure to tell you about the talk about our walkabout and what this is. I'm not comparing it to anything else, but if you've ever heard of a group wedding, it is an opportunity. I don't have all the details that Patty Risbridge has at her disposal, the director of special events, but if you give Patty a call at 609-641-4411, her direct extension is extension 12. 609-641-4411, extension 12. She will tell you all about the walkabout wedding reception. It's my understanding it's the newest wedding trend of the new year. And it is an opportunity where, obviously, the wedding is, is a big, important day. Some say the most important day uh, of your life, and you want it to be perfect. The expenses, you know, obviously mount. And depending on your circumstances, this is an opportunity for you to have all the the special effects and the, the treatment and all the amenities that you want with the um, – the group wedding, if you will, the newest trend, the walkabout wedding, where more people share in the process. Patty will explain it much better than I just did. She'll give you all the details. Also a reminder, the 2013 Bridal Show is this Sunday, that's January 6th, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. For more information, and you do need to register, go to the website, www.elegantbridal.com, Elegant Bridal. Dot com. The talk about our walkabout wedding, the newest trend in 2013. 
We're going to be back in just 60 seconds. This portion of Hurley in the Morning also brought to us by the Leonard Law Group with offices in Atlantic, Cape May, and Atlantic County, Cape May County, and uh, Cumberland County. I'm sorry, Camden County. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Stay with us. We're back with Dr. Hackerman and with Nanavati, and we're talking about, obviously, Dr. Hackerman's uh, companies, Pro-PT and Rehab, physical therapy, because it truly matters where you go for your physical therapy, and you can go to 650 Town Bank Road, Suite 203 in North Cape May, or the Festival at Hamilton in Atlanta County, Mays Landing. You mentioned osteoporosis earlier in, in the, in the uh, program, Dr. Hackerman, but it, and it wasn't just a throwaway line, but there's some details about that that I think we could delve into now. Well, yeah, it's a huge problem. And people over 50, maybe 55% of the populace has it. Uh, even it could start in childhood. It can start in utero based on the, possibly on the mother's nutrition and uh, genetics. A lot of people's bone mass is basically determined, uh, maybe 60 80% hereditary, your bone mass, what you're going to have bone mass-wise is hereditary. And then uh, there's a lot of lifestyle considerations you need, need to consider when you're uh, just even as a child growing up because basically most of your bone mass is accumulated by the age of 19. And if you were not careful growing up or have proper nutrition and exercise, and if you don't uh, acquire your genetically predisposed bone mass by the age of 19, and then especially by 30 and 35, where basically is your sun peak um, bone mass, um, then, you know, you can, there's no catching up at that point. And uh, just for example, if you take a baby who's put in a car seat, for example, uh, those things are, you know, they're stationary. And a lot of people, unfortunately, will keep their babies in there for several hours. Now, if you're in a car seat for several hours, the kids could get something like, you know, GERD. So now formulas come out with, uh, like, added Prilosec. Oh, isn't that wonderful? So they take Prilosec uh, in the baby formula. Wow. Now, the problem with, with that is that, number one, they're inactive, so they're not working their bones. They're not getting the exercises they need as an infant. Now, on top of it, they're trying to handle an acid reflux type of issue, and the Prilosec is detrimental, has been shown detrimental to bone growth. So you're giving a, a basically an infant a double whammy. So even from the beginning, you want to make sure that kids are out and about and actually starting to try to gain their motor skills. And, uh, you know, as we get, as we get older, of course, you have to watch your nutrition. You have to be careful of certain medications along the way that may influence uh, the bones. And, uh, you know, I, I ha actually have a patient now who has been a yoga instructor for many years. She has, uh, she's like, uh, I don't know what, third, two, second or third degree black belt. Um, she seems to be in perfect shape. I was concerned with her symptoms, um, and she has told me she's much better than she was before. Uh, I did suggest that she have a bone density, uh, a DEXA scan, and she, sure enough, she came back and she had has osteoporosis. How about that? So, and the thing is, is she does a lot of flexion activities, a lot of bending, and I told her, look, um, I know you're very active, and she can, she can do everything any you'd expect a yoga instructor to do. But again, osteoporotic fractures are silent in, uh, for the most part. Uh, and as I said, 20, 30 percent might be symptomatic. So she has to be a little more careful about doing uh, knees to chest, uh, sitting in a chair, folding your 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 body downward, because over time, you know, that can certainly make things worse. If you can you literally put yourself in yeah. positions that then create something else that then you have to treat. Uh, Whereas uh, maybe yeah. if you didn't do the first thing, you wouldn't need the second. Yeah, possibly. I mean, you want to live your life functionally. You want to do the things you like to do. Yeah. But you have to be aware not to overdo certain things. Also, a lot, lot, lot of medication, uh, yeah. like in cardiology, heparin is one of that thing. Heparin, right. uh, right. Patient right. with the yeah. cancer, when they give chemotherapy, yeah. people don't realize that it causes osteoporosis uh, to the certain extent. I mean, yeah. and you should be. And it's a very simple test. It's not a... MRI, so you get DEXA scan. Uh, I don't think it costs more than $100 or so, but uh, it can save your life. Alcoholic are getting cirrhosis. Yeah, exactly. Closing 30 seconds, Doctor. Well, I was just going to say that people have to be careful, too, who can't get up of their own will. Like if you try to move from sit to stand and you require assistance, you're at least twofold increasing your chances of a, of a later having a hip fracture. Additionally, if you have weakness in your lower extremities, studies have shown that you are predisposing yourself to frailty when you're older. So these are th all things we can address. 
So uh, if you, Great. I was just going to give my uh, website address is proptrehab.com, proptrehab.com. Look on the testimonials page. You can actually see live patients being treated and testimonials from physicians and patients. And the North Cape May number is 609-884-9800. For Dr. Hackerman, thank you. Dr. Thank Navarati, you. great hour. Great to be with you, sir. Same here. Keep up the good work. Thank you. My time has come and gone.